Hello everyone. Today we are going to be planting the Pacific Mix status and the Black Trumpet Celtiglosas around the around the perimeter of this bed. I've had these in their trays for quite a bit of time for now and it's time to get them out of there so that they can start growing. Uh, it's been the weather has been up and down. We've been having some cold temperature temperatures and then some heat, but they have been hardening off outside and they've been outside for a long time. So it's about time to plant them so that they could just start putting on some bloom and growth. I also had some gumfrina planted, but those all died and I had to reseed the whole tray and start over again. So I'm not ready to plant these outside yet. They're still itty bitty little seedlings and I just need them to grow a little bit before I can put them outside. Uh, some of them are going to go, be going in this bed and the other ones are going to be going in the front flower bed in the front of the house. I do have some weeds in this bed that I have to pull up and I also have some issues that I need to address in this bed like the boxwood and a daisy that I have and the magnolia tree over there. <laughs> These plants are suffering a little bit, so I do have a remedy for them and I'll be sharing that with you. This bed is not on irrigation yet. It will be set on irrigation hopefully by the end of the summer. I do have some other areas that I need to set up on irrigation that are more of a priority than this area, so I'll be working on those first. And this one will be the last bed that will get, get set up on irrigation. Before we get these plants in the ground, I just wanted to talk a little bit about status. I've never planted it, but I've seen a lot of flower farmers plant it, and I've heard it talked about a lot. And it's supposed to be a really great flower because when, it, when the blooms dry up, on the plants they stay the same color so even if you don't deadhead it it was it's supposed to hold up the color of the blooms and this is what attracted me about it this mix that i'm planting today also has a beautiful cool color to it it has a mix of tones of blue and pink and purple and i think some white in there with the white of the shasta daisies that's going to play out really nice i also have some lupins that are blooming purple right now by but pretty soon these blooms are going to die off and I'm not going to have any purple in this bed. So by putting in the sta status in here, they're going to provide that color. The black trumpet salpiglosis have a kind of a reddish, brownish, blackish, it's like a maroon color sort of. And I think that's also going to play out really well with the whites that I have over here because this bed is pretty much white and pink. And I think that's that will work out and I will be putting in, as I said, the gumfrina, which is going to be the atomic purple gumfrina, and that's more on the pink side of purple. It's not exactly uh, deep purple, it's more of a pink purple. It's kind of a magenta color. I'm not sure if the salpiglosis are going to work out well with that, but we'll try it out and see. How else would we know? So I ended up starting the status right here and it starts with a big swoop right here and then 
thins out on this side and goes straight up to where the boxwood is, kind of right there. And then in front of the boxwood, I have about three or four black trumpet salpiglosis. I was originally going to plant them on that side over there, but I changed my mind because they're going to be blooming at the same time the phlox is going to be blooming. And the black trumpet salpiglosis is as its name says it's a dark color bloom it's kind of a maroon color and i thought it's not going to look nice with the pink of the flux over there so although i have the status over here that's going to be in the pinks and purples and all that but because i have the white shasta daisies over here i thought it might play better with them on this side so i just continued the drift also started wide right here and then it narrowed on this side and I just did a straight line over here and then on this side over here I was originally going to plant these in the front flower bed I don't know if you guys can see it <laughs> it's the mulch is black so it's hard to see anything right now and everything's so little but this is royal carpet alyssum and I had a whole bunch of seed but they were super old so most of them did not germinate only a few few of them germinated and i have i think i have four of them right here so one two three four and it would have been really nice to just fill out this whole area with them or even to fill the whole edge from over there all the way to here and just wrap around this entire bed with a sweet carpet alyssum with a royal carpet alyssum sorry but that would not have worked out because these seeds weren't germinating properly so the royal carpet alyssum from my experience with it is it spreads about three feet in diameter and i gave it a good enough space between the plants so that they can kind of inter intermingle with each other but also fill up this area and i gave all these plants some fertilizer and these don't need constant fertilization you just need to fertilize them once and they just continue to bloom i don't have any experience with the status if that's what it does but with all the other things that i planted the black trumpet salpiglosis and the royal carpet lsm that has been my experience with them i just gave them some organic slow release fertilizer and they're just going to do what they're supposed to do. Late winter, I came here and I did broadcast some sweet alyssum seeds all around the edge of this bed. And also I broadcasted some nigella seeds and I see a couple of them sprouting of the nigella, but I don't see any of the sweet alyssums sprouting. And the sweet alyssum, you have to surface sow it and if the seeds dry out then they're not going to germinate during the germination process that is and that's possibly what happened here because we had a pretty dry spring it has been raining for the past couple weeks but for most of the spring it was pretty dry there is a chance that these seeds will germinate maybe next season maybe later on in the fall it's still possible but i'm not going to depend on that so this is why i'm planting these things over here I think next time I do anything like this, I will have to remove the mulch and plant and sow the seeds on the surface of the soil to make sure they're going to germinate. But again, if our spring ends up being dry, then nothing is going to germinate because I wasn't coming here and watering anything. And when I did, trying to, <laughs> in attempt to have things germinate, I ended up damaging the blooms on my magnolia tree over there because these blooms, as soon as any water hits them, they start to rot. And you can see them right now. They're all stuck to the tree and they're all rotted. So I have to pluck them all out to fix the appearance of this tree. I did weed this side of the bed, but I'm not going to tackle the weeds on the other side. It, it is a fairly large bed. As I was looking at this bed also, I thought it would be nice to have some strappy kind of texture in here, like a grass of some sort, something that's tall maybe on this side over here behind these shasta daisies uh, these lupins this is their third year they're still struggling this one this year is doing better i came this spring and i gave them some fertilizer and i put in some soil acidifier i tested the soil in here and the ph of this soil is seven so that's pretty high for most plants 
you can see that the boxwood over here, if I come close to it, you'll see that it is crisping up, it's yellow, and it desperately needs some attention. I planted this early this spring, and this is how it's looking like right now. So I'm going to give it some soil acidifier to hopefully fix this issue. I'm also going to give it some chicken manure from our chickens uh, to provide it with some nitrogen as a quick fix to help it boost its energy and help it to put on some more growth. And I'm going to do the same with the magnolia tree over here because it also is struggling a little bit. It's hard to tell, but if you look at the leaves, you can see there's some yellowing in them and there's it's hard to tell on most of them but it was more apparent this spring but you can see if i bring you close to this leaf right here you'll see some yellow margins so you can see the spottiness in the leaf so uh, you can almost see the cells <laughs> because of the shape of this leaf uh, so the chlorophyll is kind of clustered in some of the cells and not in all of them so the veining around these hexagon shapes inside the leaf is all yellow so that tells me that this tree is also uh, struggling it needs nitrogen it has uh, what is known as chlorosis and most of the time the cause of this is the acidity of the soil magnolia trees also like an acidic soil and again when i tested the soil it was a ph 7 7 is neutral anything that is lower than seven starts to uh, begin to be acidic but that is not enough acidity for the tree so let's say it was 6.8 most of the soil around our property is 6.8 ph so that is not enough acidity for most plants where most plants start to be happy is around the ph of 6.5 or 6. for plants like that like an acidic soil you want to be around six or lower. For the magnolia, I'm going to provide it also with some soil acidifier. All that soil acidifier is basically is sulfur. And uh, the soil acidifier that I'm using is organic. It's derived from the earth. It is elemental sulfur, two types of sulfur. By bringing down the acidity of the soil, that is going to allow the plants to absorb the nitrogen that's in the soil. It's sort of like us when our body is lacking iron, which is essentially what these plants require, the iron in the, in the soil that is going to allow their leaves to become green. So when our bodies are lacking iron and you try to consume iron and you notice that your iron levels are not going up as fast, by, give, by ingesting something that is acidic with the iron, helps it helps your body to absorb more of that iron and it's the same for these plants as well so by acidifying the soil it helps these plants that love the acidic soil to absorb that iron not all plants are like this of course some plants prefer a higher ph but for these plants that require an acidic soil you need to provide that acidity in the soil to allow them to to absorb the iron I don't know if I mentioned this, but anything that is higher than 7 is considered as an alkaline soil. The lupins right there also require an acidic soil, and you can see that most of them are struggling. So I will also have to put some more soil acidifier on them. The one right there that is blooming seems to be the happiest. It's green. There, I don't see any yellow margins in the leaf, any yellow veining. So that one is doing great. And. I will also have to give the rest some more fertilizer. So you can see right here, it's looking pretty happy. These ones right here, if I bring you closer to the leaf, you can start seeing the yellow margins in the leaf. And the leaves themselves, the green in the leaf is more on the yellow tinge than the green tinge. So you can notice the difference right here. This is a healthy plant right here. And you can see the plant right next to it to it that needs iron, uh, how yellow it is in comparison. And also notice the growth is hindered as well. So before I proceed on fertilizing these plants and giving them the soil, soil acidifier, I want to talk a little bit about annual plants because this is what I'm planting today. I planted a whole bunch of annuals and they're going to provide a big impact in color in this bed right here because a lot of the perennial plants, they kind of go in and out of bloom. 
I love using perennials and this is what I love to focus on in all of my beds, but there is space for annual plants as well because of that color that they can provide. Purchasing annual plants can be expensive if you want to put a lot of annual plants in an area of your yard or in several areas or in pots or whatever it is you're planning on doing. A great way to save on money is by starting annuals from seed. And I did several vi videos on that, starting annual flowers from seed. And also you can grow them indoors under grow lights or you can grow them in the winter sowing method, which I also have some videos on that if you are interested in watching that and to get ready for the next season if you want to use the winter sowing method. By using the winter sowing method, you don't need any grow lights, but it is kind of a an iffy sort of method. It might be more successful for some people than others, depending on your environment. You also have to kind of keep an eye on them because sometimes those containers can dry up. So you have to give them supplemental water every now and then. But by starting annuals from seeds, you can provide this great color impact in your garden without spending an arm and a leg. And I encourage you to do that. It is not that hard and it's going to give you great satisfaction in the end. Ideally, you want to acidify your soil about two to three months before you plant anything in it if the plant that you are planting in there, of course, likes an acidic soil. And the second best time to acidify your soil when you do have plants in there is before they put on any growth. So let's say in the late winter, early spring, before these plants have leafed out, before they put out any growth over the sur surface of the soil, you come and you sprinkle the soil acidifier over the surface of the soil and if you're able to you can work it a little bit into the soil to allow it to begin to be absorbed by the soil and to start kind of decomposing and changing the acidity of the soil but it is a process it does take some time and that's why it is preferable to apply the soil acidifier about two to three months before you plant anything in the soil preferable not preferable so i'm just going to take a handful and i'm going to sprinkle it around each plant over here and then I'm going to scratch it into the mulch. Probably better, I should just scooch all the mulch away from the plants and sprinkle the soil acidifier in there, scratch it a little bit into the soil and then put the mulch back. This way the soil acidifier has a better chance at reacting with the soil and ch changing the acidity of the soil. putting in some fertilizer. I forgot to do it around the first plant so I gotta go back and do the same around the first plant that where I applied the soil acidifier. So my pH meter over here next to this lupin says it's 7 as well. I'm not sure how accurate that pH meter is now. If that's the case, it's a miracle this plant is happy. That's all I can say. But uh, So I'm going to put some soil acidifier around it. Because just in case if that plant has access to some soil acidifier in there, the pH might change again. And I just want to make sure that it's going to stay happy.
and that is going to give them a lot of good nutrients and a lot of good nitrogen. I also gave this Wajilla over here some chicken manure and f some fertilizer as well. I did not think that this thing made it, but uh, clearly it did. If I bring the camera a little bit closer, you can see it's putting on some growth. I just have to come here and prune these dead branches right here. But if you have been around here before, then you might know that I transplanted this from our gravel driveway. It was growing right in the gravel and beneath the gravel there's only sand. And I thought this thing has a pretty slim chance of survival, but it made it. It had a really long taproot and I cut the taproot at about maybe, I don't know, like 10 inches or so and I planted it in here and it had very few roots along with a tap root so I wasn't sure it was gonna make it but it did <laughs> this early spring I came here and I thought it was totally dead and I left it to see if it actually is dead or not because wajillas in our area take forever to leaf out in the spring and surely enough this thing did eventually leaf out it created actually new branches it did not leaf out on the old branches all the old branches are dead so it put out some new growth from the soil level up. Something to keep in mind about adding chicken manure to plants is that chicken manure is kind of like compost. So you have to make sure it is aged before you add it to your plants, otherwise it's going to burn them. This chicken manure that I'm adding over here has been sitting in the coop all winter long. So it is pretty well aged. I'm pretty confident that I can add it in here and it's not going to hurt the plants one bit. Also, another thing to know about chicken manure is that it is acidic. And this is another reason why I'm adding it over here because of its acidity that it can provide to the soil and allow these plants to put on some good, healthy foliage. So I like to keep my chicken manure and use it on things that love acidic soil, such as potatoes and tomatoes and all the other flowering annuals and perennials and trees and shrubs that I have that prefer an acidic soil. I did not fertilize the tree, the boxwood, and the Shasta daisy with the fertilizer because I already fertilized them earlier this spring but the lupins I did give them a tiny bit of fertilizer this spring but I felt like it wasn't enough so I made sure to give them a little bit of extra fertilizer because the fertilizer not only has the nitrogen in it but it also has some other micronutrients in it that these plants might need such as magnesium and potassium and calcium and these things that the, the soil might be lacking possibly I've never done a soil test on this area over here i have a few soil test kits uh, that you can do on your own uh, i could test the magnesium and the potassium i believe so i can do that for this area see if my magnesium levels are too high or too low or whatever it is i don't necessarily <laughs> like to do these things unless i see a problem just because it makes it kind of less enjoyable and there is a beauty about just kind of observing your plants and recognizing what they need rather than just constantly relying on the test kits and all these things that science provides even though you know i love science i am a bit of a nerd but i think that in gardening in general uh, it's just best to kind of look at your plants and see what they need kind of develop this muscle and know what your plants need if you are a new gardener and you're struggling and you don't know and you see that your plants are struggling, a soil test might be a good option. Or if you are a good seasoned gardener and your plants are still struggling and you don't know what the problem is, that a soil test also can help. Another thing to note about adding chicken manure or anything with high nitrogen in it, because chicken manure is full of, is high in nitrogen is that if you are adding that to your flowering annuals or perennials what you're going to be encouraging is a lot of leafy growth and if you add too much nitrogen the plants are going to put all their focus on putting on all that foliage and they're not going to bloom as well for you so if you want your plants to put on a lot of blooms you want to provide them with something like phosphorus and calcium phosphorus is going to encourage your plants to produce a lot of blooms because the blooms are really the fruit of that flower um, because eventually these blooms are going to turn into seeds and the seed is the fruit of that flower or shrub or whatever it is 
And the calcium is going to encourage the cell health in the plant. So if you want some strong stems and, and strong leaves with a thick walls to them, and also if you want the, your blooms to have that same structure, you want to give them something like calcium and magnesium as well. This is why using a well-rounded organic fertilizer is good because it's going to provide your plants with all the nutrients that they're going to need. I'm not against using synthetic fertilizers. I am against them in my own garden, but I do say if you are new, it's okay. Use those synthetic fertilizers if that's the only thing you know, but really using organic fertilizers is not that difficult. You know, just go to any store and you'll find them there. Um, most big box stores have them, also a lot of the nurseries would have them, plant nurseries would have them. And using synthetic fertilizer eventually is going to start harming your soil because of all the salts that the synthetic fertilizer has in them. And the salts are going to change the pH of the soil and they're going to also stop, eventually inhibit the growth of the plants in that soil. When we first moved to this house, the previous owners, I believe, were using a lot of synthetic fertilizer and in a few of the beds I wasn't able to grow anything. Not even grass was growing in there. I also wondered if they actually sprayed those beds, uh, those beds because there was a lot of grass growing in the beds, so maybe they just sprayed them with some weed killer. That's possible too. So maybe the first few seasons we were eating some plants with uh, weed killer even though, <laughs> even though nothing was growing in there so hopefully that didn't do a lot of damage to us <laughs> you see those two posts there these are actually two sumac trees that were here i had there were tons of sumac trees growing in here i pulled them all out and i pulled today one out from here it's right over here it was all rotted at the bottom so i was easily able to just pull it out of the bed and i covered the area with the mulch that was already there I, might, I may have to come here and just fill this area with a little bit of soil to make sure it's not going to sink in. But I am waiting on these two to rot. These two, it's taking them a little bit longer to rot. And there were a few sumacs growing in here, so I pulled them all up and uh, I was thinking maybe I should have sprayed them instead. Now this bed, I don't have anything edible in here with exception to the roses, which I do not use for edibles because they don't have really strong fragrance. They're just the knockout roses. I don't know if you guys can see them. They're right there behind the Shasta daisies with the red foliage on them. So those are the only edibles that I have in here that, again, I do not use. So all of this bed is just flowers just for beauty for us to enjoy and it's okay for me to spray some of that shrub killer and weed killer on directly on the plant that I want to kill and this is what I did with the sumacs that were popping up over here in this bed last year again spraying is a controversial topic I am an organic gardener but I feel like sometimes you just have to do that in certain areas if thing is super aggressive and it is really difficult to get rid of it. We have a lot of aggressive things that are growing all around the perimeter of our property and I have been spraying for several years and I co will continue to do that until all these invasive things are gone. They will still pop up of course because you know around us they are growing everywhere <laughs> and so I will still battle with them but not as to the level that it is right now because this area was just kind of let go and all these things are taking over and killing a lot of the trees in this and around us and just taking over the space. So I think we need to be a good steward of our land and if there is something that we know that is invasive, we need to attack it before it starts to destroy the environment around us. I'm not necessarily an environmentalist, <laughs> but I do care about nature and I think we need to be a good steward of, of the nature that God has given us. Obviously you can tell this bed needs to be edged. My husband told me he was going to edge the beds today so I'm waiting on that <laughs> but he was waiting until I'm done filming. I still have one more thing I need to do today and uh, hopefully I can get that done before it starts raining again. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new and I hope it made your day just a little bit brighter. Go out there, plant something, get gardening and be a part of making this world a little bit more beautiful and a little bit more enjoyable. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time and I'll be leaving for you a video right here to enjoy until I upload the next video.